Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report, where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. As we look at yesterday's action, we once again saw the S&P move to all-time new highs. In fact, it led the way for the first time for a while. But there were a number of things that pushed the markets into this strong move yesterday. And we were doing the live stream yesterday, so I was focused on the live stream and not really looking at news stories. So doing my research on what actually went on yesterday, I found a couple interesting things that may have been part of the impetus as far as driving the market sharply higher. And that first one was that the Fed's beige book, which is usually non-material, did indicate that all regions of the country were recovering very strongly. So that was a positive. We also saw the factory orders come in better than expected, up 6.4 versus an expectation of 5.4. That's not that big a deal. But I think the key story that emerged when I was doing research tonight was the fact that there was a story out that there may be a COVID vaccine on November 1st, which that in itself, the date is interesting, two days before the election, which makes it even more interesting, curious, whatever label you want to put on it. Markets continue just to defy all logic as they keep going. We also have, the in the backdrop, and we know this, we also have this huge flood of liquidity that is there. We know it, it's just sitting there in the background. I think we're finally going to start to see more signs of the rotation and the leadership change. We did see some interesting things happen in Apple yesterday, which has obviously been the leader. And I have a video that will premiere about an hour before the opening today. It's a three minute and 58 second video on a three-day trade that I entered in yesterday's live stream, but it's actually a setup on how to short Apple and take advantage of this turnaround. That video will explain all the details, but make sure that you watch that as well. As we come into today, we have several elements to pay attention to. The first is the claims reports. There is an expectation for about 950,000 new claims that come out. As I've suggested over the past several weeks, the key numbers to watch for is that continuing claim number. Now, it came out at 14.55 million last week. If we come up with a number lower than that, that's going to be bullish. Yesterday, we also did receive the ADP report, which missed big time as it was supposed to be at 1.2 million new jobs that came in at 458,000, a huge miss. And that usually doesn't have a lot to do with what the unemployment numbers are likely to show on Friday. They're not really correlated that closely. I believe if we see a downtick in the continuing claims, that might be a leading indicator to what the unemployment numbers will look like on Friday. But if we do get this to come out better, then we could see this surge go right into the close on Friday. So there's a lot to be paying attention to, especially if the large tech companies do start some kind of consolidation here, which is appears to be highly likely. This could be the beginning of the rotation. And that's why I mentioned that earlier, that I think we might be seeing the beginnings of this next rotation. Let's take a look at the charts, see what they're telling us for Thursday. Beginning with the WaveTech database review, once again, we print a new high and we saw a substantial amount of buy signals come out on the short-term database. 1,050 new buys, about 300 sell signals, so we had a net 700. This pushed the bullish percent from 56 and change, 58.04. I've been talking to you about this for a number of weeks that I think this database will rotate. So we may not get to these numbers that I've been talking about, maybe into the 40 percentile range. There's still a lot of work to be done with the market surging like they are, pulling a lot of stocks back into the mix on a short-term basis. This is a very dynamic environment that we're in, something like we've never witnessed before. I've been watching this database for nearly 22 years and I know it like the back of my hand 
And it's interesting to watch this particular sequence because I've never seen some of the things that have been going on with this before. And I think it has a lot to do with just this volatility, the flood of liquidity and everything that we have going on right now. There's actually still a lot of uncertainty in the markets, but the uncertainty is will things keep coming back and everybody's afraid of not being involved if things do keep coming back. So it's a weird kind of sentiment that's out there. But nonetheless, we're seeing the markets be driven sharply higher. Beginning with the S&P futures, there's a trade that I often talk about and that has to do with the market grid. And when we when we close above the RXT number, oftentimes that will signal a two to three day sideways with a slight bias to the downside. And we are seeing some weakness in the futures overnight. We're down a quarter of 1%, not a big number. We have traded down to a low of 3567.25 S1 is 3268 even so we printed just a touch under that we're seeing a bit of a bounce off of those levels right now and we're printing back at 71 there's still a lot of work to go we could see today be a r1 s2 type range especially if the three-day trade that i'm discussing on the video that will premiere at 8 30 eastern time it comes to be a good trade that's going to put some some downside pressure on the markets. I don't expect to see a lot. Now, we saw Apple down yesterday and the markets were still able to rally. And this is why I continue to talk about this rotation. I'm not going to go through the spread charts tonight. They didn't really move much yesterday. There was slight positives. A lot of the movement is continuing to happen in the secondary stocks in the Russell, not in the primary or the larger capitalization of the index so there's some a lot of opportunities going on there it's not worth looking at the spreads this signal suggests that we get at least two days sideways which would put us into friday as i discussed in the opening comments everybody's going to be keen off of these unemployment claims especially the continuing claims and into friday and then there's always the long weekend lurking in the background as well so that's likely to keep a lot of people guessing as we get closer into Friday's action. If we hold S1 where we've already printed overnight and we can get above, we trade back up to 3590, we could actually see the 36 handle maybe moving up to R2, R3 today. The volatility that we're seeing and the upward pressure seems to be still accelerating. PPM1 now is at 0.55. PPM2, 0.36, and 0.32 on PPM3. These are all accelerating numbers telling us that the probabilities of a decline below the 3490 level, which is a ways away, but that is your major support right now. is 3490 to around 3508. The S&P cash had the same configuration. We closed above the RXT yesterday. That number is... 3553.27 the close was 3580 we're substantially above it on the cash so it will be interesting to see how we we trade today as we look at the grid numbers for the s p for tomorrow looking at 3589 r1 r2 3598 then r3 is 3608 we're definitely going to print over 3600 and this is happening very fast and it doesn't appear that based on momentum or any other metrics that I am watching is telling me that we're not going to continue to print this market higher. And in fact, we're seeing an acceleration at this phase and, and not seeing a deceleration or any type of concern that would come out of any of the metrics that I follow. A quick glance at the VIX index. I talked about this a couple of nights ago. The 200-day moving average is going to be substantial resistance. We printed up to 27.07 on the cash VIX. You look at the market grid for today. The S1 is 25.95, R1 
And there was a question asked on the live stream yesterday, why is the VIX going up when the market's going up? And I do believe there's a hedge being put on as people are getting concerned about these levels. It's not actually signaling any kind of market top or reversal at this time. Reviewing the NASDAQ daily futures chart, we're seeing some minor weakness overnight, 0.35 on the downside. As we look at the daily grid for today, we're looking at a low of 12,352. S1 is 12,356. So we printed an S1 just like we did in the S&P. The high so far, 12,438. So we're quite a bit below R1. R1's 12,467. A print above that next number is R2. So it's very possible if we hold these numbers overnight coming into the open and we hold S1, then we're most likely going to see an R2 high tomorrow. Same thing with the S&P. Make sure you can backtrack on this video. Uh, you can also see the S&P market grid on the community section in this channel. The configuration on the NASDAQ is slightly different. We're seeing momentum starting to fail just a little bit, but it's still in very robust numbers. The PPM1 is at 0.75, PPM2, 0.53, and PPM3, 0.37. All three of these numbers are in major trend modes. In spite of the decline that we're seeing, we, we're not really anywhere close to this thing rolling over. The key support right now on the NASDAQ is 12,006. I think we'll just call it 12,000 even. We're a long ways from challenging those levels right now from the standpoint of the configuration on the daily charts. Next market I'll cover is the U.S. dollar. We're seeing some dollar strength overnight again. It's pressing through the 21-day moving average, which is 92.95. A close above that level will signal a move higher toward the levels that I discussed a couple nights ago at 93.80. Possibly nine, the low 94 handle could trade here. If we look at the PPMs here, you see an acceleration on PPM1. It's now slightly positive, not in a trend mode yet. PPM2 is accelerating. So we're not in trend mode yet, but there is enough momentum here to push it at least up to that 9380 level. That's about 100 points from where we're currently trading. So this pattern is going to continue to strengthen. And when we review the weekly chart, you'll see that the PPMs are setting up a reasonably major bottom. We could see the impact of the dollar and the metals and other places continue to put pressure on them. This is somewhat contrary to what a lot of people are expecting. And I mentioned this several weeks ago that crowded trades out there was short the U.S. dollar. So it almost ha had to at least find a low. Now there's still substantial weekly trends. PPM1 is at a minus 0.47. PPM2 minus 0.31 and PPM3 minus 1.13. But two of the three trends are in trend mode, but they are starting to show signs that we're going to bleed off this downward pressure and set up a further pattern for the dollar to support. I suspect that we could run back to at least that 10 week moving average, 94.28. We'll consolidate between. 93 and 94.30 for a couple of weeks before we'll be in any position to move any higher. The final market that I covered tonight is gold. In last night's video, I talked about a key support at 19.25. Based on new calculations on the 10 day moving average, now 19.21.80. PPM1 is a 0 0.70. However, that upward slope of 0.71 should be enough to support the markets. But Thursday will be a key point. A close under 1921 would signal a move to go back, test last week's low, 1908, and a possibility of printing under 1900. As we review the daily chart, 
The market grid shows S1 at 1937. We've taken that out. We're currently trading 3470 with a low of 1932.50. Next level S2, 1928. Then S3, 1920. So it looks like we could challenge this S2, S3 numbers, which would also correlate with that 10 week moving average. So that should be the extreme for today. That suggests that the resistance now is around 1965. I've talked about this a couple of days ago. The 1960, 1958 level was support. Once we got through that, that level is now going to be the resistance for gold for the next couple of days. Uh, the only positive that I see here on this chart is that PPM1 is trying to turn back up. So if we get a reversal, we close back above the 1943 level, that would be enough to start to move this market into a minor bottoming pattern from this configuration. There should be no long positions in this market other than scalping that range I talked about. There's still a possibility to scalp off of the 1920 level because of that 10 week moving average. This will complete the video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.